days like this, uh, it's hard to get great motivation to start anything, but that's why I want to uh, keep the exercise routine to a very succinct and short burst. So that 10 minutes of going down the block and the 10 minutes of coming back is easy to do, and before you know it, you've got one task out of the way. So we're going to do that right now. Oh, you have to make sure you're warm enough. So, done. Now I'm on second phase, and that's to do my usual workout. But if you can, uh, if you just have time to do the 10 minutes up and 10 minutes back, then that's fine. You're done for the day. You should still get on your pedometer and watch your steps per day. Remember the total, it's, it's not the bursts that you do in a gym for three hours, which is unsustainable, but <clears throat> it, it, for most people anyway, it's the longevity and the accumulated amount of activity you do. So uh, I'll show you my pedometer later, but now off to the gym. Now on to a uh, little re resistance exercise for about 20 minutes. 20 minutes of getting a pump is always pretty good. But um, for those of you who just get uh, muscular stiffness from getting a good pump and then stop off at that, please be careful. I'll put a link to my video on um, before and after pre-workout and post-workout stretching. For me, I'm heading over to yoga, but uh, this is about the extent of my resistance training. So now walk to the uh, next phase, which would be yoga. I used to use uh, yoga to start stretching before exercise, now it's reverse. Yoga will follow a really quick exercise routine. Oh yeah. So that was um, one hour of 40 degree humidity and 105 degrees or 40 percent humidity or I don't even know at this point got to recover rehydrate and get some carbohydrates in if you remember from the first week I wanted you to pick up something of a big calendar that would make it very visually easy to be reminded of our accountability for this 12 weeks of a lifestyle change. Uh, as we go down the line, and I have my reasons. Uh, m mine, again, as I mentioned to you in the previous videos, is I'm leading a hike in Zion, Utah National Park, and I'm training for that. But as you continue to scratch off, you'll see that the end is coming up. And it, it sometimes, I guess at the fourth week, a couple of my patients that are also watching this video have told me that they haven't been able to keep up and they're only doing the um, the supplements and I, uh, this is not going to work if you just take one leg of maybe nutrition and forget about the activity remember it's thinking eating and activity um, I want you to try to embrace all three if you do all three even if it's minuscule you don't have to do what I just did on my average workout day and that's what I uh, had in the previous video uh, uh, at least the real here was on a Saturday it's not I can't fit that much exercise in in one day sometimes I just do the up and back walk three times a week and then I'll try to shoot for yoga that has my mini pinnacle for the week and I'll throw in a, a resistance exercise of some sort when I get free time it all depends on the week if I have a seven day straight schedule of working then I just grab what I can and kind of um, owe myself the activities the following week. So this is why it's really nice to be accountable. <clears throat> what I want you to do for this week, week four, is to start writing down your diet diary. I want you to see at the end of seven weeks, uh, seven days, what you take in in a 24-hour period. So if you write down, uh, you can kind of figure out, you can scratch it on your calendar or get a separate piece of paper, divide it into seven columns and write down everything you drink and eat you'll see that most people will bunch the, the biggest meal, the most dense meal, at the end of the day. The, and if you take that in addition to the rest of your 
mini breakfast, snack, lunch, or whatever it is you do uh, spread out, if you kind of take that full volume and maybe chop down the biggest meal and spread it over five separate servings for that whole day. If you have a, an average, you can do that. And you'll n also be, once you see it on paper, you'll notice that, boy, I really eat a lot at night. As I finished up an evening shift last night, uh, all of us, it's supposed to be finished at 11, we got out of there at 12.30. So if you don't, if you're starving, and you add an hour and a half to that starvation, thinking that you're gonna be getting out early and you don't, you'll be not only hungry, but also frustrated. And that's two things that start that cortisol level up. Stress response goes up, and you don't have to be totally stressed out, but when that stress response goes up, even a little bit in hormone levels, by the time you get home, you're going to be hunting for food and it's gonna be hard to stop. I made reference to the relin from last time, that hormone that comes from the stomach that's going to be hard to stop that and that's why the people that I work with know that I usually right before I leave I'll have a salad or something filling, a sandwich that I made, anything of the portable uh, fruits and vegetables that I rely on I will try to have that before I leave at least I'll have some form of satiety to maybe start to decrease the relin secretion from the stomach by the time I get home even though we're late, even though we're hungry it helps. Every bit helps. It might not be nutritious, or I should say it might not be delicious tasting, but in my mind I know that if I'm a little bit full, I won't attack the food that's being left out or my comfort food that I go to if I'm weak, tired, if there's a show I want to keep uh, watch on TV as I get home late. It's sometimes hard to stay away from those cravings and fight them off. So that's why it's important to have accountability. So that's what I want you to do. In addition, uh, there's a pedometer that I want you to look into. And you can get a, a small pedometer that you clip onto uh, your waistband anywhere, $10, $20. Uh, they usually will be easy to see. Just uh, You start it from zero, you put it on in the morning, and by the end of the day when you change, you count, it'll, you read the count. I want you to also put that on your seven day diet diary. That way you'll see how many steps you take in a day, you'll see what your total volume is of food and liquids, and then you can kind of distribute it. If you have deficiencies, then you can make up the deficiencies. If you see it's all meat, no fiber, then you can make up that fiber. If you don't take any fluids in, then you can add the fluids to that. So I want you to uh, see it on paper. It's all easy to see once you list things down. Those of you who are very good with um, memory, it's still, again, to be accountable to yourself at times of stress, you'll probably forget. When you have it on paper, it's easy to review, record, and fix. Our objective here at the end of 12 weeks is to fix what we previously relied on so that it's sustainable. I want you to just continue with the uh, supplements as is. We're going to be finishing up on your chromium picolinate and I'm going to be suggesting a different switch over. Uh, Jim Nemo will stay the same, the fish oil will stay the same, the probiotics will stay the same, and the St. John's wort will stay the same, but next week we'll be doing something new and it'll be exciting. There have been randomized controlled trials on everything I just mentioned as far as uh, helping with sustainability uh, of lifestyle change. Uh, the bottom line is at the end of all this we will hopefully just be man monitoring and uh, using one or two supplements, maintaining a good diet, and maintaining some form of activity that you can resonate with. 